Today I'll be talking to you about Genome 8 Pro and Evernote. Two, two excellent programs that will help you make your DNA research more productive. 3 p.m. is a difficult time slot to be speaking in. Um, I hope you're all thinking about the things you've learned so far and how to apply them in practice. And I hope this helps you focus you and, 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 and gets you thinking about all the possibilities for your own research. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about each application and how it can help you. I'll also be doing a, another lecture in January if you're doing, if you're interested in learning more about the product of Genome Pro. Uh, I'll also be covering a little bit of the history of my research and how has it improved through the use of these products and do a walkthrough of the key features. It's not a how-to and we're going to have to move fairly quickly through a lot of these screens so I'm sure you'll have lots of questions and hopefully we'll have time for some at the end. So what is Genomate Pro? It's a free database held on your, on your computer for all your DNA information. The data is stored locally on, the, on your own computer so it's not in the cloud or, or anywhere on someone else's server for privacy considerations. So that's not an issue. Um, it's complicated because um, it assumes that you know about autosomal DNA research techniques. You've learned a lot over the last two days and um, hopefully you can apply some of that through the use of the product, but it's not essential. You can use it if you're a beginner. Evernote is a mobile application. It's really a note keeping application, but it also is very good for organizing, um, creating task lists, archiving a lot of material. It's free to use. Uh, there is a premium plan, which I would recommend. Um, but it's also cross-platform and you can use it on multiple devices. So some of the advantages of Genomate Pro is that, uh, keep, as I said before, it keeps everything in one place. It makes you focus on your analysis of chromosomes, so it stops distracting you and you don't keep going off on tangents chasing surnames that aren't relevant to that particular match because you're really looking at the chromosomes. Um, it reduces rework because you are always uh, updating uh, the information in Genomate Pro. When you leave it for a few months and come back, you'll still have all your notes and resources there that you won't have to sort of go hunting through different um, applications or folders to find things. It has a lot of searchable fields. It's very good for managing multiple kits, but it's also good for just one. And if you're going to use um, uh, load data from FTDNA, really you need to use the DNA GEDCOM connection client. Um, it makes things much smoother. Evernote, as, as we said before, free, searchable. You can set up keywords and tags to find things. Different people approach it in different ways. You can have one big folder or use a hierarchy of notes, notebooks and stacks just similar to files and folders, and etc. You can set up shortcuts, CC yourself uh, as an inbox uh, for any important correspondence so that it's all kept in one place. Again, it syncs across all your devices. And the premium version is the thing that sold me really initially is that it actually, when you store PDFs in Evernote, they actually search within them. So those pedigrees that someone sent you and you can remember a name, you'll actually be able to find them if you use Evernote. So what is your goal for research? Um, the goal drives how you would use the product um, and your goals might be different to me. So I'm going to give you some history about how, what my goals are and um, why I'm doing things in a particular way. Um, Yours may be different. So this is my name pedigree back in 2010 when I first started testing. I knew 114 out of 254 of my ancestors and that's about 45% of them if you're looking at a seventh generation pedigree. Now my primary goal at that time was to test a theory about this infamous George Courtney who's there in the circle. You don't need to be able to read all those names but that's my second great-grandfather. And um, I have a theory for who his parents are, um, and I can fill in all those uh, pink squares there. 
but uh, I thought when I tested that the answer would be Im immediate, but <laughs> unfortunately it hasn't been, and I'm still looking for George. So my DNA goals have changed eight years on. Uh, I'm now looking to have a complete pedigree out to my fifth great grandparents and confirmed that they are also my genetic ancestors and to map all my chromosomes to those ancestors. Back in 2010, I thought my Irish lines were a lost cause and finding my illegitimate grandmother's paternal side was impossible. But I have actually had some success on both those fronts. When I started using GenoMate Pro, which was in September 2015, just three years ago, I'd only confirmed with DNA 12 ancestors, and that was mainly from tests I initiated myself, cousins I've had tested. That's only 4.7% of my possible ancestors over five, five years. But since I've been using GenoMate Pro, I've had uh, significant increases, and I, 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 I believe that it's using GenoMate Pro has, has enabled me to get um, to have these results. So my pedigree is now up from 45 percent in 2010 to 66%. That's 21 percent increase. And my DNA confirmed ancestors, I now have 32 percent of my possible ancestors confirmed, up from 4.7. Uh, in September 2015, and that equates to also 50% of those that I've already those that I've identified compared to 10% in September 15. So now I've identified 66% of my ancestors, but I still don't know another 34%. So that's a staggering amount. That's a third, over a third. Uh, and so a lot of those matches that I don't know how they're matching me could actually be matching to some of those ancestors. So Genomate Pro has helped me to focus my research and to also think about the matches of my cousins, not just my own matches. Um, remember, this porcupine chart shows that not all my ancestors' DNA got to me, but it might have got to my cousins. So you need to look broadly. Building your pedigree is a continuous cycle. DNA is just another resource for that. So you just need to be look you need to be looking at all your matches all the time and saying, are, are these genetic matches telling me my tree is correct? Yes or no? So if it is, you can confirm your ancestors. But if not, you need to do more research. So DNA matching is always giving you lots of clues about that. But the primary thing and the primary reason we're all doing this is to build our pedigrees. And I want a, a complete one that's right. So that's driving my analysis. So when I look at what I've DNA confirmed, it's only 82%, 82 so far of 254. So there's lots to go. I like to use this X inheritance chart to, to when I'm thinking about where I need to focus next to remind me, you know, when the X chromosome is relevant. Now it's important to work backwards in time, just like with traditional research. So what do I mean when I say DNA confirmed? Well, up to third cousins, it's uh, having a the total shared xenomorph is consistent with what's expected, plus a confirmed paper trail. But out of our past Ferg cousins, you must have triangulation, and this is where Genomote Pro comes in. It helps you keep track of where you have triangulated matches and can allows you to focus on the gaps. Now remember, Ancestry DNA doesn't give you any chromosome data, so it can't be used for DNA combinations past third cousins. Third cousins. So this is where GEDmatch comes in, and it's important to load GEDmatch information into Genomate Pro as well. So I'm working backwards in my pedigree to complete each ring. So you can see there that in the second great-grandparent ring, 
I've got everyone in DNA confirmed except for two. I've got two empty boxes there, and that's Edward Roberts and George Courtney. So they're my next next challenges. Now George is a brick wall on both the gene genealogical front and, and the genetic front. Remember, he was the person I first and what was one of the reasons I first tested. So I'm going to look at Genomate Pro today, uh, using looking for George as a bit of an example. Now this is the home screen for Genomate Pro. This is what you get when you log in. It's not very pleasing to the eye or very intuitive. It's a database and it's very clunky but it has a lot of information there and you need to read all this because it's all very helpful. That first point there is telling you that it's complicated and why it's complicated. But there's lots of help, help functions. Over here's a whole lot of information about getting started. There's a Facebook group and a user guide which is excellent for support. The biggest challenge when you start out is to uh, create profiles for your kids and download and import all the DNA data. This can take a very, very long time. It works best if you use a DNA GCOM connection client, which does cost $5 a month, but you can pay your $5 and then uh, just use it for one month and then stop your subscription. It also works uh, a lot of the extensions. Uh, there are a lot of Chrome extensions that are, are useful for um, pedigrees uh, and work best with Chrome. But once you've done all that, um, you'll find that you'll be able to use the information to analyse your results. It will take a long time to start up. And a lot of people give up after that, before that. So here's my stats. This is what's in my database. So look at that. I've got 294,000 relatives, 585,000 DNA segments, and nearly a million triangulations. So that's after using it for three years. And, and I'm constantly adding segments and triangulations and relatives, so it's growing all the time. So what gets me is how can we possibly manage that through the spreadsheet? Well, Danielle's going to try and tell us how to do that next. But I don't believe it can be done that way. Okay, so again, this is a screen from Genomate Pro. You don't need to read everything on there. But basically, this is where it shows different profiles that you're looking at. You set up profiles, so that means someone whose kits you'll manage or a close cousin that you want to track. Uh, has details of um, uh, imports there. Now I've been lucky enough to use visual phasing to help me um, track um, segments that on my maternal side. Uh, my mother and her two siblings have all tested and this is an advanced technique and it's not for today's discussion but I'm going to try and work through um, some of this to be able to show you how I, I, I'm approaching Genomate Pro. So Abigail Courtney is the daughter of my mysterious George Courtney and she's the paternal, paternal grandmother of my mother and her two brothers. So you can see there that she has, they have inherited from her a lot of segments on chromosome 16. So I'm going to look at these two segments today because as you can see there they all match um, either Abigail Courtney or John Murphy on a lot of those segments where those green bars are. So we're going to look at where there's some differences. So in the area of 27 to 51 and 77 to 89. And we also know that I inherited the Courtney segment in some of those areas up to about 83, but I've got John Murphy at the end. So that will help us to understand who's matching on the paternal side or the maternal side. So let's look at the first area. Um, so Genomate Pro, another good thing that Genomate Pro does is that it loads all the false positive regions from ISOL. So it shows them there in orange. So when they, they just automatically show up in orange. So that's telling us that this is potentially, not definitely, a uh, false positive area. Um, there's very few cent, uh, matches out of seven centimorgans in this area. 
And because it's a false positive region, uh, there's not there doesn't seem to be going to be many clues there about that might help me find George. Um, so I'll look more closely at some of the DNA comparisons here. So you've got the DNA comparison screen. Um, on the left hand side um, is the actual DNA segments for Rick and that shows who is matching Rick. So these four kits here, the three siblings and me, um, which were set up as profiles. Now the drop down menu does give you more options and allows more interrogation. You can see that there's quite a few um, possibilities. Now because it matches me, and we know that I have Courtney in that area, so this match must be coming from Abigail because it matches the three siblings and me. So Genomate Pros allows you to put in a group name um, there. And when you add a group name, it doesn't actually impact on the chromosome map you can see at the top here, um, but it does populate um, that, that chromosome map is populated when you actually confirm a, a more recent common ancestor. Um, so the group names are really a hypothesis and when you confirm a match you put in the ancestors names and that will then show in the chromosome map. You can click on that mini segment map to see more detail as well. All of that information then populates into a larger segment map as you confirm segments. So this is good in that it's you don't really need to do anything. This just actually populates as you go. The main thing is getting the names of your ancestors right and being consistent. Um, it also then view you can also view it at different generations, which is a good feature. So I can see there that just Abigail Courtney in that three generations. Now these days DNA Payton provides a much more intuitive and easy uh, um, uh, mechanism for sharing and collaborating but um, I paint from here to DNA Painter details of my triangulated groups and put my reasoning in Evernote and uh, usually give my triangulated groups a reference number which makes DNA Painter less complex than when you load all the matches to it. One thing I wanted to point out for Ancestry imports is that um, another great feature is that when you load uh, Ancestry DNA imports through DNA GCOM, um, it does show you the total segments and also imports tree and surname and location inf information, but the uh, wonderful thing is that it also imports in common with um, cousins that are distant. So you can see there on the screen that that's the ancestry I see W um, segments that I've got in common, or not segments, but matches that I've got in common um, with my cousin. Now these distant matches wouldn't come up on a ancestry search, it would only show up to fourth cousins. Now going back to visual phasing, I'll now look at the second area. So the second area here we can see that um, only my mother and her brother John have Abigail Courtney segments. So I'd be looking at profiles where uh, those two people had matches. Um, now when I go through and identify them all, I've noted down here that um, Abigail Courtney, there's all those Murphy segments but most of the, there's only a few Abigail Courtney segments. I had lots of them, lots of matches greater than 15 centimorgans but really only four that were interest, for interest on the paternal Courtney side. Now the colours tell us different things, um, uh, different testing sites come up in different colours, you can change the colours. Um, but uh, you can see that the, the four matches, one's from Family Tree DNA, uh, two are from My Heritage, and one's from 23andMe. So it's impossible to tell if it's triangulated because you really need everybody on one site. 
Um, so we're now going to look at um, the relative detail screen at the other three tabs that are there about Arn and Tuffle and family comparison. So under the family comparison um, section, um, you can see there that some surnames have come across from 23andMe. Um, it's identified that it has a common surname of Parker with me, and it's listed my Parkers in that bottom column. And there are all possibilities. If you click on, on that, the name, it will show those names, and there are all possibilities from Abigail's maternal side. Trees don't always import, but there are ways to get them here using Chrome extensions. So we go then to the Unentuffle Pedigree tab and use the Chrome extensions, which are all in your handouts, to get the tree information into Genome Pro. So what do we know about match four? We found out that whilst there's no data important, but she she had a, she has got a 51 person tree at my heritage. So this, this is how we get it in there. So we right-click. Uh, there's a lot of right-clicking in Genomate Pro to give you a lot more information. So we couldn't copy and paste her pedigree. This one's coming from my heritage, so we use Pedigree Thief. And then we set the relative list to the Unentafel values. So once we've loaded the pedigree in the Unentafel screen, um, you've got all this information. Now this is um, sortable by these uh, links up the top so that you can sort them into uh, any order you want, uh, name order, surname order, place, etc. And then after that, um, if you go back to the family comparison screen, you've got all this lovely information in these different boxes. Um, you can see there that um, we have Courtney's in common and the Courtney's in my tree are listed there. If you click on those, it gives you information about that particular person, if you're not quite sure which James he is. The other great thing is status fields. As you can see up there, this particular person, because it's me, I've, and it's a match to my mum, I've marked this as MRCA found. Um, but there's lots of other different statuses that you can mark, and this is very useful for um, organising who, what you're going to do next. All these fields have drop downs and all these fields are searchable. So you can see there in the middle the, the various status fields that you can mark. Um, all these things are searchable so you can search um, in all these areas as well which can be very useful for finding people with matches with common surnames. Now the About screen is probably the most important screen for information about your match. Keep as many notes as you can here. Um, add in one-on-ones. Um, this area down here, if you've set these up correctly, are all live links. Most are populated through imports and the open page is a custom field used for other useful links to that person. So it's got the link directly to their 23andMe page or their Ancestry DNA page or their family tree. You don't need to go logging in and out of um, different applications. It will take you directly there, which is really um, useful and um, much quicker to deal with. Um, as I said before, cut and paste as much information in there. If you do any one-on-ones, always import them into Genome 8 Pro. Or if you don't import them, at least put them on the screen here so next time you're looking at this person, you don't do it again. The other great thing is about sending emails. I like to use the email template that's built in so that all my emails have a standardised subject heading, making them easier to find when searching. Um, the Options tab opens up the template. You can edit it however you want. I have other template paragraphs that I've developed to insert, that, that I insert depending on the match. And it stops you having to rewrite the same thing over and over again. The last thing I want to show you on Genomate Pro is the relative list. It's really a super searcher. It's fairly new. Um, and it's an extensive search feature for all profiles. It's very useful for finding surnames, location information, email addresses and that sort of thing. 
unlike the chromosome view, which is profile specific, this one searches everyone in your database. So if you've got a hundred different people uh, set up in there, it will look for all of them and see the common surname across that. You can see here that I've searched on Courtney and there's lots of different people here that are matching. And I, if I've, I've placed a note in, um, in each of them about how they match and that comes up in this view. So you can see here that a lot of these are paternal on my paternal side so I wouldn't bother looking at them for Courtney's. But others where they match mum or match on this Murphy Cassidy line then but they are not of interest either. But EAR1 and this other one might be. So Evernote. Before I had Evernote, fi filing was a mess. I had lots of paper, lots of electronic emails. I couldn't remember how I could remember having pedigrees from people, but I couldn't find them when I needed to. I used email folders. First I classified by name. Then I classified by chromosome to help with triangulated groups. Then I used to do's by family line. Finally, just to do's and done. And then I saw the light and decided just to use Evernote. Evernote stores everything in one place and you always have everything at your tip, fingertips no matter where you are because it's synchronized across all your devices. You can set up shortcuts for frequently used information, GED match numbers, kit numbers, etc. And set up an inbox where you can CC mail to. So uh, I sort of have a hybrid of um, folders where I store specific information and then the inbox, which is really all my unsorted stuff. But I can put my fingertips on it when I need to. Use tags um, to increase your success in searches. And the winner for me was the premium version of uh, Evernote which uh, allows you to search inside PDFs. So this is an example of a shortcut. Um, here's some notebooks and a stack is a group of notebooks. You can see there that I've got a genealogy stack which consists of a number of notebooks within which there is a number of notes. Um, so you can see there my triangulated groups is 121 notes, yet my DNA me has got 1168. So some of the note examples, I might have them sorted by match name, by triangulated groups, by location, that sort of thing. It's also a great place to store templates and um, standard paragraphs for insertions into email. I've got, there I've got my templates, I've got 74 different notes set up depending on what the circumstances are, um, what the match, who the match is and who they're matching. Um, so I've got all of those so I just cut and paste those into the standard template when I need to. So this saves time. I also have a folder for a notebook for triangulated groups. I um, number all my triangulated groups and uh, cross-reference them into Genomate Pro and then I'll add the facts and information together so that I can see everything on one page and sometimes you know you're looking for patterns and you'll see things jump out at you that way. You can also attach files and go directly to where they are stored on your computer. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the web clipper. You can see the little elephant there on the uh, tab up there. When you're on the net, you can actually um, save things directly into Evernote. And this is really a very excellent tool. So you just click on that and this box comes up. You can save it into a notebook. I've got the name here. I've saved it into DNA General and Education Notebook. I've put all these tags on it so that I can actually find it again. And I just click on here and save the link. And when it goes into your Evernote, it saves the link, it saves the file, PDF, as a file, but it also gives you a hyperlink back to the original page, which is really good. So I hope today's session has given you some insight into what Genomate Pro and Evernote might be able to deliver for you. It'll help you move from being frustrated from overload to being more confident and being able to quickly work out where you're up to even if you've lifted a lot for a while.
Most importantly, it will help you improve your DNA outcomes. Good luck with your research. Thank you.